Hey guys and welcome back. Well, it's time to do another game prop, okay? What we're gonna model today is a crowbar. Uh, for some reason, they always show up in games and uh, I received a request to do a video on that, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna model it in Maya, we're gonna texture it in Substance Painter, and we're gonna render it in Substance Painter, okay? So here we go. Okay hey guys, well it's time to start with our crowbar model. As you can see, I loaded up the reference image and I'll make sure that you have that available as well. Just uh, check the link below. And now it's time to get started. Okay, so we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna have a close look. And you can see in our image here that the bar is not round, it's six-sided. So that's what we're gonna start with, okay? And we're gonna focus on this curve at this end right here. So we're gonna take a uh, polygon cylinder, we're gonna go into our attribute editor, hit Control A to pull that up. We're gonna go in, we're gonna set caps to zero as we don't need that. We'll set subdivision level maybe to 12 or so. After all, it's uh, actually that one should be six, of course. Uh, and the reason is that we could get our six sides like so. We're gonna hit R to create some length like this. And we're going to use that section to create that curved part there, okay? So what we need to do is we need to increase the subdivision level in height, otherwise we can't bend it. And that's why I want to go with 12, okay? Okay, so let's uh, bend this thing. We're going to go into uh, our modeling menu. We're going to go to Deform, Nonlinear, and Bend, which will create a bend control in our attribute editor right here. And if we move this curvature, you can see that it's bending nicely, okay? Now, I don't want it to bend um, in the same amount at both ends, so I'm gonna do something like this, and then I'm gonna take my high bound, and I'm gonna bring that back slightly, like, maybe like so. Yep, one back. Let's do one more, maybe. Okay, we'll do that, okay? All right, well, when I'm happy with that, I'm gonna select this, go to edit, delete by type and history. That way my curve is gone and I can now start to work with this guy, right? Now, it's important for me to have this top part level. So I'm gonna hit E to rotate, hold down a J and we're gonna snap it like so. That should bring this part here level. So I'm gonna hit W to push that down and we'll just have a look and see if that is the case. Checking out our grid line. And you can see that it looks okay, cool. So now that we know that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, right click, go to face, just like that. We're gonna hit Control E to extrude and W to pull out to increase a selection like so. And let's try and keep these sections roughly the same. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit G to repeat last command. G to repeat last command. And we'll just work our way over to the right. I'll just zoom out a little bit. And because of the reference that we have, we're gonna kinda have to eyeball this, okay? I mean, you can go out and get more references, you know, side view, top view, whatnot. But the whole purpose here is kind of to train your eye, if you will. Normally, when you're modeling, it's really, really important to have a lot of reference images but I find this a good exercise as it will help you to look uh, at models in a different way and try to you know, get to where you need to be just by looking at it. All right, so I think we're okay here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out one larger section like so, and then I'm gonna right click at a vertex. I'm gonna drag select these and I'm gonna hit R to push them in. You can see that the orientation is off. So I'm gonna double click on this guy and I'm gonna move from object mode to world mode. I minimize that. So now when I go in, I can kind of flatten that like this. Okay, 
And then I'm going to hit W to move that up because that should be at an angle, obviously. Like this. Let's see if it's long enough. We'll pull it out a little bit more and a little bit up. And then what's important for that section from the top view, and we'll hit F to zoom in, is we want that to be wider, okay? So let's have a good look at our reference image uh, to the extent that we can get a better understanding of how that looks. All right, so, um, yeah, let's see, shape wise and so forth, okay? So we're gonna go in, this is our top part right here. We're gonna go to insert edge loop, option box. Let's try that again. And make sure it's set at single setting. And we'll add one just about here. Q on our keyboard, right click vertex, drag select like all of these, and I'll hit four for wireframe mode so you can see it better. And we're gonna hit R and we're gonna start to stretch these out like so and I'll drag click these and push them back in slightly okay so let's have a look here that's not too bad maybe you want to flatten that a little bit so we're gonna right click at our vertex and I just want these middle vertices okay Hit four for wireframe mode so you can see it okay. And we're gonna slightly push that in, okay? And maybe we'll do that with these two as well. To kind of make that more level, okay? So if we hit five, yeah, just thinking what do we need to adjust this one. So we're gonna right click our vertex, hit W and push that down somewhat. And then this one and push that up. And again, just a little bit. Okay, so I'm happy with that part. Now for the other part, okay? So we need to come around in this bend here. So we're gonna right click at a face, we're gonna hit Control E to extrude, W to pull out, and let's look at the orientation. And here we definitely need to do this um, basically by looking at it. So we're gonna switch views, we're gonna go in here. And the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna right click at a face, not vertex, sorry, right click face. We're gonna select that. I'm gonna hit uh, E to rotate it. And we're gonna hit R to push it in somewhat. And W to move it back. Maybe scale it up just a little bit more. G to repeat last command. W to pull out. And move down. And again, we're gonna hit R and we're gonna squish that in a bit. G to repeat, W to pull out. And I have no idea whether we're okay as far as proportions are concerned until I check it out from a different angle. We're gonna hit R again, we're gonna push that in again. It's starting to look okay, all right. Now that needs to be nice and wide. So we're gonna do right click vertex. We're gonna drag select these vertices right here. And we're gonna hit R to scale that out. And we're gonna select these as well. Scale that out too. And I'm looking at the to see how far that will extend out. So we can hit W, let's pull it out a little bit. Hit R, push that in a little. And then we're gonna right click, go to edge, double click on that edge, hit W and move that forward to 
I would say about there. And then we're going to go back in and we're going to do another injured edge loop. We'll do one just about here. Hit Q on our keyboard. And then what we're going to do is we are going to, uh, let's see, how are we going to do that? We're going to go in, we're going to right click that edge, and I'm going to select this edge. First, we're going to get rid of this face here. Hang on. Delete that face. We're going to right click that edge. We're going to select this edge and shift select that edge and go to. Uh, edit mesh and that should work detach but we'll see if that's true we're gonna right click go to vertex select one yeah it does so we're gonna select that one too okay so now from the top we can now create an opening we need to create an initial opening first, otherwise we're not going to be able to see it. So I'm just going to push that out quite extremely. And do the same here. And that is of course blocking our view, which is not good. So let's see how we can do this. We'll be fine. We'll Right click, go to vertex, drag, select these. I'll hit four for wireframe mode so you can see it. Let's push that back to about here. Okay. Let's bring these in just a bit. And these as well. I think that looks okay. Five for shaded mode. And let's look at the overall proportions here. Yeah, I think that's not bad. We do need to tweak it a little bit, and we'll do that in a second, okay? So now that we have that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, go to edge, select one and two, go to edit mesh and bridge, option box. I want a one division here and I want a linear path automatic so hit bridge okay and then we're going to do the same here one and two g repeat last command and then we'll have to go in and make sure these vertices are merged okay so we're going to go in and since they move that I've been, oh, I'm always looking for it. Okay, so now we need to right click, go to edge. We're gonna double click on this edge and go to edit mesh and fill hole. And again, um, that's something that has been moved around. Mesh and okay. Mesh and fill hole. Okay. We're gonna double click here. We're gonna hit G to repeat. Okay, we're not quite there yet because we want this to be flat or flat er. So we're gonna right click at a vertex. We're gonna drag select I'll hit four for wireframe mode. These vertices. Hit five to go back. R to scale down, we're gonna push that all way, way in. And then we'll select these and these and do the same. I think that looks okay. And obviously we're gonna need to clean up this mesh because um, of the end guns, but we'll do that in a sec. Uh, the only thing I wanna do here is I want to make it a bit longer, so the whole thing, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna select faces. Let's do that from this view right here. 
Actually, let's do vertices, right click vertex, take all of that, and W, move it over. Let's look at the proportions. I think that looks a bit better. And then we need to have some edges going on here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into, into edge loop option box. Uh, there it is. Uh, we're gonna go with multiple and set that to one. And that sounds weird, but when we do that, it will be set perfectly in the middle. So we can now do one in the middle here, one in the middle here, and if that's not enough, you can do sections like so, okay? They're not perfectly um, spread out, but not bad. All right, so now that we have that, let's uh, deal with our end gons here. We're gonna right click at object mode. We're gonna go up to your mesh and clean up. Now, we want to uh, clean up, we want uh, four-sided faces. Actually, we want faces with more than four sides. Those are the ones that we want to uh, attack. And uh, let's see what else. That should be it, okay? So let's hit apply. Clean up, let's have a look. Okay, you can see that additional edges have been uh, added here. And we just need to bring down this bit here. So I'm gonna go to vertex, drag select this one right here, and shift drag select this one. We're gonna hit R, we're gonna start to bring them together. And then we'll do the same with this one and this one. Just to kind of transition into that shape, okay? So this is the, the modeling bit. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna uh, right click, go to object mode. I'm just gonna pause the video while I UV this guy. Uh, I'm not gonna cover the UV process. I'll put a link uh, below if you don't know how UVing uh, works and I'll put a link below to a playlist. So uh, you have a bunch of videos that will explain you how to do that. But I assume if you are um, modeling something like this, you know how to UV, okay? So I'm gonna quickly uh, pause the video and uh, I'll be back with the UV model and we can export it so we can texture it in the Substance Painter. Here we go. Okay guys, ready to go. So let's go up to uh, File. We're gonna go to Export Selection, Option Box. I want this to be an OBJ file. And if you cannot find OBJ export here, you have to go to Windows, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, and look for the OBJ plugin and make sure it's activated. Now, this is usually quite a long list, so uh, let's see if I can find it quickly. Here, OBJ export.mll. Okay, there you go. So we're going to go to File, Export Selection, Option Box. And once again, OBJ, Export Selection. I'm going to save that on my desktop and I'll call this Crowbar. OBJ, all right, and export. Okay, see you guys in Substance Painter. Okay guys, well, after uh, UVing the model, I kind of decided that I wanted two different types of material on my crowbar, as uh, typically is the case. So uh, what we're gonna do before we export it again as an OBJ is we're gonna create a quick color mask or mask ID, okay? So we're gonna right click, we're gonna get a face. I'm gonna go into the end here and I'm gonna select the faces that I want to have a different material. So it's gonna be these, these, and then these ones at the end. And I'm just gonna hit four for wireframe mode so we can be sure. So I don't want the sides, they need to be black, but the top sections are good, okay? So I'm gonna hit five for shaded mode. I'm gonna right click, assign new material, and it doesn't really matter what color we do as long as it has a different shading group. So I'm just gonna go in and, I don't know, make it yellow or so. That way we can see clearly, okay, that's the right area. We wanna do the same down here. And basically we can use the same color for that. So we're gonna do these. And we're gonna go in and, oops, 
wrong control. I'm going to do these. I think that is that. And then we need to go in and do these. And these at the end right there. So if I right click and go to assign existing material, Lambert 2, they should be yellow as well. You can see that I got a little bit too much going on, I think. Well, not enough, actually. This guy right here. All right. So now that we have that all set, we can now re-export it. So we're going to go in, object mode, file, export, selection, option box, still OBJ, export selection. I created a folder for that. Uh, it's called crowbar. There's my crowbar OBJ. So I'm going to overwrite that. And we're good to go into Substance Painter. Here we go. Okay, guys, well, we're in uh, Substance Painter, uh, so it's time to load up our model. So we're going to go to File and New, and we're going to leave our template at PBR Metal Rough. That looks fine. We need to select our mesh, so we're going to go into uh, Select. I created this OBJ in my folder called Crowbar, so there we go. And I'm going to leave this at Direct X, and I'm going to change the map size to 2K, and let's hit OK. All right. So here's our model, uh, came in okay, looks fine. Now you don't see the color mask on the crowbar here, and that's not the point. However, what you do see is we got two different texture sets going on. We've got one for the main body, and we've got one for the, uh, the section where we wanted a different material, okay? So we're not gonna go too fancy on this. I'm just gonna use some basic materials. So we're gonna go into our materials tab and uh, let's see, for the back part here, this should be somewhat, uh, you know, regular steel or so. So we're just gonna make sure that we have that uh, selected. We're gonna select this guy. It's called, let's see, titanium is a bit expensive for a crowbar. Uh, rough iron maybe raw, maybe even better. Doesn't look that raw, but yeah, we'll go with that, okay? So we're gonna bring that in. We're gonna drop that on, and it looks okay on our model, I think. And then we're gonna go to the main body right there. We're gonna turn that guy off, and let's look for something painted steel, maybe. Uh, painted steel, there we go. And we're on the right layer. Let me see here, this guy, there we go. We're gonna left click and drag and pull that in. And there you go. So if I turn this on, we, uh, hang on, why is that looking different? Give me one sec, guys. I think I dragged it onto the wrong layer. Control Z, that's my main body, okay? So I'm gonna be up there. Let's bring that in. Let's deal with that. That should be a different color. So let's try that. We'll do steel rough. Okay. Get rid of this. Shouldn't be there. Steel rough. There we go. Turn this back on. And there you have it. Okay. So with that in place, let's do a quick render. So we're going to go up to our um, mode. We're going to go to our rendering mode. And this already looks pretty cool. Uh, let's uh, flip that around so we can see it better. And keep in mind, it's not crazy details, but then again, it's intended as a game prop, OK? So let's get that into position. We'll go in and uh, let's see. I'll increase the samples a little bit to get a bit of better result. We're going to go in and choose a different HDRI image. Not quite sure what, but I think this one looks OK. And what we'll do is we will rotate the environment a bit to get some different lighting going on. OK. I think that looks fine. And uh, I don't really want to see that background there. I want to see like a solid color. 
Now I know that that setting is in here somewhere, so uh, we'll uh, run into it as we move down. Uh, let's see, what else? Camera view. Just give me one sec to find that, guys. So that seems to be okay. There we go. We're gonna open that up. We're gonna select the clear color for our background. Let's change that to, I don't know, something that is white-ish. Maybe we'll just go white. Um, trying to think of something gray looks better for contrast. Yeah, maybe that's better, okay. All right, so that is basically it, guys. It's pretty straightforward. It's not too complicated. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you want to hang out with other 3D artists, um, check out the link below to the Facebook Hangout group, okay? There are over 1,500 uh, amateur and professional 3D artists in that group, and they're exchanging uh, works, they're learning, they're sharing, and they're having lots of fun, okay? It's uh, invite only, but you guys are invited. It's completely free, obviously. So I uh, hope to see you guys there, okay? So thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.